Welcome back to the Hot Lab. So, with the help of Motorsport Magazine, a fantastic article, and Pat Simmons of 05 and 06 Renault fame, we're looking at how much does an F1 car cost. Now, before 2021, there was no budget cap, and it was estimated that it could have been as much as $400 million or £282 million before that all-important, slightly controversial budget cap. There is now a strict cap on what they can spend. In 21, it was 145 million. In 22, 140 million. And in 2023, this year, 135 million. And there were penalties if they were to go over a la Red Bull in 2022. But let's get into how much does an F1 car cost? So let's start with the chassis, otherwise known as the monocoque. It's the central part of a Formula One car. And all other parts, additional parts, basically the front wing, the halo, the rear wing are attached to it. It is essentially a single monocoque structure and it forms this protective shell around the driver. Virtually indestructible. We're talking twice as strong as steel and significantly five times lighter. It's normally made up of 12 layers of carbon fiber materials and weighs around 35 kilograms. So how much of this central piece of the F1 car, the chassis? It's uh, $707,000 or half a million pounds. Yep, keeping that driver very safe. Next up, we've got the rear wing and DRS. Now, this has a key influence in the downforce of the car. How many times this year have we had Hamilton get very upset about the rear of his car? So this gives extra grip through the curves to really, really lower those lap times. And both the front and rear wings are really, really expensive, despite of their size because they're one of the most heavily designed things on an F1 car. And we can't forget how complicated the DRS is. It's not just a flap that opens up. Look at the difference and how much of an advantage Red Bull had with their DRS in 2023 at the beginning of the year. So both the DRS and rear wing cost, we're looking at 85 to 150,000 dollars or 61 to 108,000 pounds. We need that downforce. So from the back to the front, we're looking at the front wing and this front wing assembly is one of the most intricate and crucial parts of the car. Remember, this is hitting that air first and so much of the car's performance comes from this front wing and getting into those corners and the downforce it generates. Now, since the new rules came in from 2017 and obviously 2022, the designs have had to be more and more complicated and this can drive those costs sky high. So, one of the most designed things on the car, we constantly see upgrades, $141,000 or £100,000 for that front wing. Next up, we've got the Halo, developed at the Cranfield Impact Centre. It was brought in to protect the driver's heads. Now, we're talking from debris, from wheels, even from other cars. I mean, remember Zhao at Silverstone or Lewis and Max at Monza when Max's car pretty much stood on Lewis's head, had it not been for that Halo. So the halo, how much to keep our drivers safe? Well, we're looking at $17,000 or £12,000. Fairly cheap in F1 standards when you look at the rest of the car. Now let's look at the floor. This contributes to around 60, yes, I said it, 60% of the downforce. So making it one of the most important parts in terms of performance. And as a result, kind of like the wings, they've become really, really intricate. If you remember Perez's floor, everyone interested in it. And Monaco, after that crane, lifted it up for all to see. And if you think of Mercedes porpoising, all the problems they've had with the floor, they are really, really complex. And the FIA have attempted a number of times to lower these downforce levels in respect of safety. But with these new ground effect rules, the floor is all the more important. How much does one of the most intricate pieces of car cost? 60% of the downforce at a cost of $141,000 or £100,000. Some say the heart of an F1 car, we've got the engine. And as we know, F1 has been using the same V6 turbocharged engines, otherwise known as power units, since 2014. And they've been developed to maximize performance, but also be really, really reliable with the so many engines per season rules. They are made up of six components. We've got the internal combustion engine, the ICE, the turbocharger, known as the TC, the motor generator unit kinetic, yeah, that's a mouthful, the MGUK, the motor generator unit heat, another mouthful, 
otherwise known as the MGUH, the energy store, and that's the batteries and the control electronics to store that power when they need to go a bit faster. How much for an F1 engine known as the heart of a Formula One car? $18.32 million or 12.92 million pounds. So an engine would be nothing without the gearbox and F1 has semi automatic gearboxes yet we've got eight forward gears and one very clunky let's say reverse gear and as we know when we go on board they've got paddles these paddle systems up and down the gears on their steering wheel allowing for seamless shifting taking around 0.05 seconds to change that gear now what we need to bear in mind is some teams buy their gearboxes for example Haas while others make their own for example McLaren makes its own for that Mercedes power unit and obviously so do Mercedes so how much for an F1 gearbox that can shift gears at five hundredths of a second? $354,000 or a quarter of a million pounds. So what else does an engine need? It needs fuel and it sits in a fuel tank that is pretty much, almost, unless you graze on, indestructible. Made from a, let me get this right, polyurethane? Probably not. And Kevlar, this bag of fuel, it's ribbed and designed to fill the space behind the driver's seat, also being attached to that very seat. And that prevents the bag from collapsing and fuel drains. So how much for something that sits right behind that driver and is almost indestructible? $31,000 or 22,000 pounds. Something that we all have in our cars, but this looks very much different, akin to an arcade machine, is the F1 steering wheel. It's mainly constructed from carbon fiber, but it has those silicone grips on the side. Now, McLaren Applied Technologies, it supplies standardized ECU, which the steering wheel is based around. This limits it to 20 buttons. It has nine rotary switches, yep, six paddles, however, Every switch and button is customizable for each of the teams and drivers' needs. Now, despite its relatively small size, let's say, the multitude of possible technological adjustments to the wheel made, it's extremely valuable. And they're so customizable that even within the same team, drivers can have very different steering wheels. So how much for something that has more knobs than a US nuclear submarine? The F1 steering wheel, $50,000 or £35,000. On to hydraulics, which some could say is the blood of an F1 car. And it quite simply couldn't function without its very own hydraulic system. This controls nine systems, nine parts of the car. We're looking at power steering, clutch, gear shifts, reverse gear, differential, the DRS system, brake by wire, throttle, inlet valves, and a turbo wastegate. So this is highly complex, and when it goes wrong, it goes very wrong, in terms of we've seen F1 cars retire countless times when they suffer hydraulic issues. So how much, what is essentially the blood of an F1 car controlling so much and going so wrong when it fails? $170,000 or £123,000. Next up, we have these black round things albeit very important round things yep they connect the car to the circuit they are tires currently made by pirelli they come in different forms we've got the soft tires the red mark tires they give the extra grip but don't last too long the medium tires kind of like in between that and the hard tires the white walled tires they last a long time but not necessarily the best grip and also for rainy conditions, we have the green intermediates and the blue wet tires for when they're standing water, but we don't really see them. Somewhat of a controversial subject, let's say. How much are these all important black round things that connect the car to the track? We're looking at $3,000 or £2,080 per set. So there are additional costs, but we're gonna spare you all those intricacies. For example, we have a chassis loom that could cost 25,000, a wheel bearing which are 1,100 pounds each, or, or a drive shaft which sets you back at about 7,000 pounds. So we are looking at additional costs at around $51,000 or 36,000 pounds. 
So that pretty much brings us to the end of how much does an F1 car cost. I hope you've got a little idea, thanks to obviously Pat Simmons, Motorsport Magazine, and us here at the Hot Lap. If you made it to the end, you are an F1 champion. If you like and subscribe, you are a multiple F1 champion in our eyes, but it's just enough for you to be watching and listening. So thanking you very much.